What's up guys? It is Jonathan with One Big Impact. So today I want to welcome you if you're new to the channel and I want to talk about a few things. Obviously this is going to be a channel where we do lots and lots of things. I am a bipolar Aries that does a wide spectrum of videos and I've tried to narrow it down to where it's like diet or fitness or powerlifting or unboxings or how-to videos or travel videos and I just can't do it. Okay, so if you want to know a lot about a lot of different things, this is going to be the channel. We've been here for 12, 13 years, and in all honesty, unfortunately, that's just how my brain operates. It's all over the place, all the time. So that is exactly what you're going to get through my channel. All over the place, all the time. And I'm no longer trying to hide from that because that is literally just the way I am and who I am in my entirety. <laughs> that being said... I would like to talk or shall I say reminisce a little bit about just life and I know it's been a long time since we did a welcome video and I want to say thank you so much for coming. If you find value in my channel, please uh, share, like or subscribe and click the notifications buttons. A little bit about my channel, I do say bad words quite a bit and I apologize for that in advance. Um, I do my best to make uh, content appropriate for whatever that content is steered towards. Excuse me. Um, I do how to fixing cars and unboxings of different products that I get or people send me or anything like that. Um, so if you are looking to reach out or if you need meal plans or you want personal training advice or anything like that, you can email me at thrifttime at gmail.com, T-H-R-I-F-T-T-I-M-E at gmail.com. So, a few minutes ago, a uh, song came on, and I'm not religious or political or anything like that. I'm very muted on all of those. It's none of my concern, and I don't like to definitely bring them up or anything like that with anybody because I don't prefer to argue about those things or anything like that and people can be very passionate and I think that's great and it's just not my thing um, but that being said a song came on it was Randy Travis I think it was called forever and amen and it made me think back you know one of the things that we do constantly when we're younger is try to say oh this music sucks or oh this sucks and I don't know necessarily that my mom specifically listened to Randy Travis. I'm sure she knows who it is and stuff like that. But I have things and points in my life where it's like, what do they call that um, word where you are not reminiscent, but the other one, it's like thoughts or thing, feelings of the past and stuff like that. What is that called? I forget what it's called. Um, but I'm sure you'll figure it out excuse me and tell me now we're all figured out and it's gonna drive me nuts but my mom used to listen to like Madonna and Michael Jackson and different things and stuff like that and I've come to a point in my life where I'm like I really truly enjoy hearing those things because they remind me of when I was a kid and I was growing up and I heard them in the background or in my house and stuff like that and I guess this welcome video isn't so much about the videos I make it's more about who I am and I think even more importantly um, maybe understanding where I'm at in life and showing a true appreciation for what it is um, I've had a lot of stuff happen in my life. I lost my brother when I was younger um, And I think maybe that was pretty traumatic and I probably never dealt with it or anything like that um, I was fairly young when we lost my brother. I was like 16 and um, I think I dealt with it with like hatred and different things um, Because I was mad for my brother leaving us and stuff like that and he passed away and um you know, recently, probably about four or five years ago now, I lost my son. My son, Boo uh, Isaiah, passed away of an overdose of fentanyl. And
a lot of these things that have happened in my life, like more recent things, opening a gym, um, opening a bigger gym now, and working with lots of amazing people on a lot of different aspects. Um, you know, when, like when I was younger, I got stabbed multiple times when my kids were younger, and I didn't really like, didn't wake up then or anything like that, and I definitely didn't think about it, and then I was going through a divorce, and I didn't really think about it then, And but I would say now, over the course of the last maybe, and you can call it whatever you want, people go, oh, it's a midlife crisis, it's not a midlife crisis, it's something else, it's a different word, um, but I, what I've noticed is, I've been through a lot of things and I know that you have too, whether it's fitness or weight loss or loss or happiness or love or hate or, um, you know, losing a job, gaining a job, traveling the world, uh, experiencing court battles, whatever ex crazy things or injuries or life changes or anything that you've experienced. and. I really truly think the the some of the things that I take for granted are understanding that I'm extremely grateful for my life and I know that it isn't forever obviously but I think it's very much so a beautiful thing you know like I think about sometimes and I, I'm trying to stop with that self-limiting mindset or anything like that. But like, sometimes I think, well, I could just close the gym. And if I close the gym, I could go work at Walmart and I can make, you know, two, three thousand bucks a month. And that would be two, three thousand bucks a month more than what I make at the gym because it truly is just a labor of love here. I don't really make anything. I'm usually a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks in the hole every month. It's getting better, although this has been a really good last couple months and I'm getting more people and I'm so grateful for that. But understanding that I have the freedom to come in and do what I want, play with the dog, and I can play on the couch for five hours if I want, or I can sit at my computer and edit videos like crazy and do lots of things, or I can rent out paddle boards and kayaks, or I can really push that, or um, I could talk to somebody through Messenger about their diet, or you know, trying to help people, or I could come in and work out anytime I want, or things like that even though I'm at a point in my life where I don't have like loads of money I have loads and loads of possibility and I have loads and loads of gratitude I have truly spectacular people around me right now like I don't think I've ever been in a position to where um, I've been so grateful for so many things that people do on every single daily basis you know, Brandon and Veronica brought me some paper towels the other day. Haley brings toilet paper to the gym all the time. And I don't know that I necessarily express that, hey, if somebody doesn't bring toilet paper, I don't think we'll have toilet paper. I don't have toilet paper at my house. And it's mainly because I don't feel right taking from the situation, if that makes sense. So I... I, uh, Haley brings me beef jerky every day, so I got protein and brings the dog stuff, walks the dog. Um, she offered to watch the dog while I go to uh, on, to the powerlifting event for a couple weeks. And, uh, you know, Noel brought me a case of Monster the other day. And um, it's not just the gifts or the things or whatever, it's just truly a point in my life to where I'm like dude I am so lucky I am so lucky I'm so happy that I get to be able to travel the world I'm so happy that people in healthy living for a healthy life are getting results and still really trying hard to stay on track and doing well and we have lots of great and beautiful people in world travelers um, and Eric should be popping up soon. Hopefully someday I think he's going to come here and sneak up on me. And you know I'm going to make you work out because you've been on a healthy kick. And um, it's, 
It's a life that I am never even remotely satisfied or content with. Um, I have dreams and aspirations of owning multiple gyms in multiple countries and having a little apartment or a house or a piece of land in each one of those places. And when I get older and stuff like that, I want to retire by the time I'm 40 or by the time I'm 40, I'm already a little too late there. Retire by the time I'm 50 and work because I want to, not because I have to. And it really is truly where I'm at today. Like today I'm literally like, I'm there. Like I'm, I'm working because I want to, not because I have to. And you might say, well, you just said you don't have financial means or blah, blah, blah. It's not because I don't have financial means. It's because truly this is what I want to do and I enjoy doing it. Nobody has to force me. I don't have to wake up and be like, oh, my job sucks. I have to go in today. No, I truly enjoy the people. I come in and we have a good time and stuff like that. And it really is cool. It really is cool. And I don't know if it'll be forever or for the next, you know, 10 years or anything like that. I have no idea yet. But I will say that um, if you are going through things in life and whether they're, I'm just going to share some insight of things that have helped me or things that I've noticed that work um, along my path. So a lot of you guys know that, what was it? I don't know four or five, maybe years ago, excuse me, I was living with my mom and um, I was always thinking, I got to get out of here. I hate this place. My mom's driving me nuts because she's constantly up my ass about this and that and stuff like that. And it wasn't anything to do with my mom or anything. But I realized, you know, when Boo passed away, I realized that I was watching a video one time and it said something along the lines of, if you want something, you have to focus on what you do want. Stop focusing on what you don't want. So an explanation of that, an example of that would be, if I wanted to move out, then I needed to focus on what I did want, not what I didn't want. Oh, I don't want to be here. I don't want to, I, want to, I don't want to deal with these stupid flowers on the wall anymore in this bathroom. I don't want to, I don't want to come home and have to walk all through, through the house and everybody drive me nuts and stuff like that. So I started focusing on what I did want. And I started saying, you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna get an apartment. It's, it's gonna be such a beautiful apartment. My apartment's going to have, you know, this and this and this, and I'm gonna have my own AC, and I'm gonna have a little area where I can have breakfast and stuff like that, and I can meal prep and things like that. And it happened, it truly did happen. Um, within like 30 days of starting to think with that mindset. So start focusing on what you don't want, not what you don't want out of your current circumstance, if that makes sense. Um, another thing that I've realized that have gotten me in a position to where I'm happy and grateful and gra uh, grateful um, and feeling a life of gratitude is, in my opinion, one of the hardest things that I've had a problem with is when I am, you know, hard up, like meaning, oh shit, I woke up today and my account's three, four, five hundred dollars negative. Um, I stress out and I grind out and I try to get a client and try to do this and try to do that and do whatever I got to do, post like crazy to try to sell stuff or do whatever I got to do. And what I realized is going, excuse me, going harder like that doesn't necessarily yield results. I've always done this and I figured it out now that if I don't give, I don't get some reason the universe is not giving back to me unless I give to the universe so I've noticed the more I do for other people like I'm training the kids oh shoot now I got clients like everything starts flowing like you have to give to get to give to get to give to get and it really truly is so if you're stuck mentally in a position where you're like I just can't get out of debt I just can't get out of this I just can't make money start realizing stop worrying about what you want and start thinking about, do you have something, whether it's physical, unphysical, tangible, non-tangible, whatever it is, talk, a simple, hey, how you been? Whatever it is, can you provide somebody with something that they need or could use or, and, but never expecting anything back from them? 
Like, could you randomly help somebody on the side of the road just because you can? You know, and I'm not saying like be a sucker and give everybody to this panhandling or something like that. But if you come across the situation, a few months ago I was at a store picking up an order at Taco Bell for DoorDash. And it kind of makes me sad because this guy kind of reminded me of Elijah. And Elijah's in prison, my other son. And. He was in the area where Elijah used to hang out and stuff. And he's like, yo, man, uh, I got some food stamps. Can you get me, you know, a meal or whatever, and I'll trade you with food stamps. And I'm like, don't worry about it, man. Come on, let's go get a meal. And I was kind of pissed because he's just like Elijah. He ended up racking up like $20 worth of shit. And I was like, I thought you were getting a burrito. Like, what the hell? And I was, he's like, oh, man, I thought you were going to, get, you know, trade for the food stamps. And I'm like, nah, I don't do that, man. I was like, it's all good. Don't worry about it. He's like talking about this and that. He was like NASM certified to be a personal trainer and everything. And which if you weren't a personal trainer, you wouldn't really know that certification. So it wouldn't be just, I'm a personal trainer. You would have to know. So, um, he wasn't lying. He was definitely whacked out on drugs and stuff. And it just made me think, you know, if I could make his, if I made his day just a little bit better, you know, he's probably like sleeping on the streets and it's sad and it's, it's hard because my kid was there, um, Elijah, and it's really hard to to know that your child is suffering and there's nothing you can do about it because they're fighting this invisible battle that you can't do anything about and everything. So, um, But that being said, I knew that it was the right thing to do at that moment because even though... Um, they were, he was using drugs, I was getting him food, and he was hungry, and probably overworked and stuff like that. So, I guess the moral of that is, if you find yourself in a position to where you can help somebody, and you don't have to worry about them helping you back or anything like that, do it. I'm not saying be a sucker, don't give somebody thousands of dollars or anything like that, but small things will come back. The universe is going to give them back to you, for sure, 100%. Um, and... Some other things are, I'm so grateful for an open mindset. And I would say thank you to my mom because my mom was on a spiritual journey quite a few years back and she was very about like hiking and, you know, uh, good energy and stuff like that. And that stuff really settled in with me, but I really didn't know it at the time. So what I mean by that is like a belief. I have this weird, I call it, um, delusionally optimistic mindset that I can truly achieve anything and I want to thank my mom honestly for believing in me like I've always been a pain in the ass bad kid um, wild hyper on ADHD meds for years now I'm bipolar and I haven't been the best idea of what a successful person will or won't be and I'm not saying necessarily like I'm a successful person or anything like that but what what I am saying is I've learned good good values and good morals and I know when to do the right thing and when to do the wrong thing and I know how those things feel to uh, do them and I'm extremely grateful for that and I'm extremely grateful for you know my mom believing in me and I think that belief really truly did bleed into my entire soul to where I believe I can do most things within reason, you know what I mean? And um, I believe I can go to every country in the world that is not like in harm's way or anything like that. I believe, even though my mom wouldn't believe that that's a good idea, she tells me all the time, oh, traveling's dangerous, blah, blah, blah. So I'm thankful that I have the mindset that thinks I could do this. I could travel the world. Even though I don't have money, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter because I can travel the world. I can go see things, I can do things, I can experience stuff. I can uh, live in another place someday. I, I I can go somewhere and just pop in and have a great time and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm extremely grateful for this mindset because so many people truly believe deep down inside that it's not for them or something stopping them or something, everything. Like I've heard 
so many damn excuses. The world's dangerous, or uh, I love America, uh, or um, I'm injured, or I can't afford that, um, or I don't have time to travel, or this or that, and it's like, bro, you're here maybe at best 75 years. That's 75 summers. I'm 43 deep, dude. I got 25 more at best summers. And dude, for me to live like one more moment to think that I couldn't go see the world or I couldn't stand in front of the Eiffel Tower and just be like, holy fucking shit. Like, or I couldn't climb the Scottish Monument. I don't think I'd fit in the Scottish Monument with my fat ass right now, but I have done it. <laughs> and like, or I couldn't, you know, go stay with Mama and Papa Zoo in Vietnam in the in the rice fields and get super wasted while Mama Zoo makes Papa Zoo and these French Canadian group of people that I was traveling with everybody blushing because she was so inappropriate with her drunk talk and all of these things. Could you imagine if I couldn't experience these beautiful things? When I saw the Eiffel Tower, I just started pouring fucking tears. And it wasn't because I gave a shit about the Eiffel Tower or it's just a big steel structure. It was just thinking like, man, a lot of people truly do go their entire fucking life believing that they can't do this or that they won't do this or that they can't afford it or whatever limitations. And I'm so thankful that I don't have those mental limitations, whether it's from lifting or whether it's from people uh, losing weight or whether it's from uh, traveling the world or whether it's from working on learning Spanish, which I will become fluent in, um, or any of those things. I'm so grateful for who I am. I am not everybody's type of person. I truly am not. Like, I would say 90% of people don't or will not like me. Like, and I understand that and I get that. I think people like me for a very short extended period of time, which works really well because I train people for an hour and then goodbye. <laughs> but I think the people that are around me do like me, which is great. And that's the small percentage. So I do feel grateful that I have kind of created a, not created, but like gotten lucky enough to have a little bit of a tribe of people around me that are very like-minded and share similar beliefs for the most part and stuff like that, which is really cool. Um, but that being said, it's just, life is like such a learning game. Like we have to constantly be learning and expanding the way what we think and believe and stuff like that. And I have so many flaws. Like I have this hating flaw. Like I hate, I don't like this. I don't like this person because of this. And it's usually just made up bullshit. And for some reason, I just feel like I don't like them or somebody looks at me wrong or, you know, I got anger problems and I get frustrated easily and overwhelmed very easily on certain things and stuff like that. If somebody were to knock on the door right now, I would like send me into like a jolting panic for like 30 minutes that I couldn't calm down from. Um, so definitely there's different things about me that I don't super love, but I do understand. Um, I need to work on organization. As you can see, it's a mess behind me. But all in all, I don't want to say my physical, but my mental and emotional, I'm extremely happy for. I'm still working on the physical, like being okay with loving myself, who I am, and what I look like, and stuff like that, the way that my body's shaped and stuff. But I think we truly need to be like on an eternal path of trying to really just chase everything that we want to chase, not coming up with reasons why we can't do things and stuff like that. And I think part of why that is is my divorce helped me with that because. I was able to see from a different perspective all the things that I had said were stupid or gay or this or that or anything like that and stuff. Um, and I truly was able to, I did dance lessons for years and I stopped drinking and I did this and I did that. And like my ex-wife probably would never even believe those things that I would do those things. And 
I truly think that if you are on a path of continuous growth, you really will get the best version of yourself. If you say, I can't do this because, or I won't do this because, or that doesn't work because, or that's impossible because, I'm gonna get a big banner that says the following. And I wish I could buy it today. I've already custom made it, but I can't afford. Oh, there's that word. I'm not ready to purchase it yet, but I will be very soon. Probably within the next month or so, I will be purchasing this. See how I said that? You gotta be careful, you gotta catch yourself. It says, if you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. That's it, that's my quote. If you fight for your limitations, you truly do get to keep them. If you fight for saying something doesn't work, it won't. Why? Well, because you won't try it. If you fight for saying you can't see the world, you won't. Why? Because you won't go. If you fight for saying you can't squat something, you won't. Because you won't squat. If you fight for saying that you can't run, you won't. Because you can't run. You say you can't run, you won't run. Right? If you got legs, you can run. If you have belief, you can achieve something. If you have disbelief, you cannot achieve something. And those truly are some of the fundamental things that I've learned. And I know this is kind of just a blabbering thing, but I'm extremely happy about how far I've come and where I'm at at 43 years old. I feel like I have tons of room for growth and um, I'm happy on the things I've learned, the things I can fix or build. Um, I want to learn how to weld. I want to um, get better at like organization skills and you know channel my anger differently and stuff like that and all kinds of things I want to work on. Um, so I'm curious, what is something for you if you watch this video? Maybe you do, maybe nobody ever watches it. I don't care, it doesn't really matter. It's a long video, I'm sorry. I'm curious for you, what is something that you truly, truly had to break through to be able to happen in your life? Well, whether it was like, well, you know, I used to talk shit about travel because that was a big one for me. I used to say, I'm going to travel the world, blah, 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 blah. I never even looked up a plane ticket, dude. And then when I finally did, it was tough in the beginning. And now it's like, yeah, it's second nature. No problem. I'm getting better at as I, as I go. But... It wasn't easy. So I'm curious, excuse me, what was something that you thought was never possible for you and you broke through? Like broke through it. Not like you always used to say, I can't do this, and then you did it. And I'm curious, what was your breakthrough? What was the thing that you broke through? And another thing is, what do you feel like you truly can improve on in your life? And it doesn't have, it could be, it could be, religiously, spiritually, it could be um, health, it could be something that you want to improve as far as like independence or uh, it could be anything. I want to be more mechanically inclined or whatever because I truly do believe whatever you want to focus on, if you really put a lot of effort into it, you, become, you can become better at it. And uh, I'm really curious. Anyway, that's my video. Welcome to my channel. Uh, thank you for all the continued support over 12, 13 years. Who knows what the hell videos. We have over, over I think over 3,000 videos available online. And I'm sure you can find all kinds of things. Maybe my channel would do better if I stuck to one thing. But it's not what I do. It's not who I am. And I embrace that. Thanks for watching, guys. We have a couple tags here. Travel because you're not dead yet. Be stronger than your excuses. Remember to spread love, not hate. Drink your damn water. Hashtag Team Boo. And the reason all of those are what they are, be stronger than your excuses because I'm the king of excuses. Travel because you're not dead yet because I had to remind myself constantly to believe in myself and travel the world. Spread love, not hate because that's what I do really well. I hate a lot of different things and I try to remind myself to spread love, not hate. Drink your damn water because for the first 35 years of my life, I don't think I ever did. Hashtag Team Boo. Team Boo is my son is Boo is Isaiah. 
And uh, yeah, that's it. Right at 30 minutes. Goodbye.